please put your hands together to welcome our very special guest, Professor Peter Higgs. <laughs> Professor Higgs, welcome to the Science Museum. You've had a sneak preview of the exhibition this morning. Uh, did it feel like CERN to you? Uh, yeah, yes, it, it did. It, it gave the, the right, it, it had the right feel for CERN. Um, uh, I mean, the, the, uh, you know, the, the slightly dirty walls on, on, on the tunnel and the scruffy corridors between the offices. That's just like saying. <laughs> the only uh, thing which was surprising in the exhibition was to find all, all these pieces so close together. I'm Eloise from Man's Head School. And my question is, who is your hero in the world of science? Who is your hero in the world of science? I suppose in in my school days this was probably probably Paul Dirac because I mean he he'd been a former pupil, um, but but of course I also uh, learned learned a lot about uh, previous people, particularly in theoretical physics like like Einstein, who was one of Paul Dirac's heroes, and uh, also James Clerk Max, Maxwell before him. What thoughts went through your head when your original paper was rejected and they sent back saying of no obvious rele relevance to physics? Uh, well, the, 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 um, the, the remark about no obvious rele relevance to physics uh, didn't come with the re rejection. It, that, that was reported to me by a colleague with whom I shared an office who'd gone to CERN uh, to spend a month in the summer while I was writing these papers. When it, and when he came, came, came back, he explained to me that when my papers arrived, they, they would have been uh, passed along the, probably passed along the theoretical corridor at CERN t t until they got to somebody who thought he could uh, referee them, uh, and, th and that they didn't, didn't uh, think that uh, People there didn't think that it, this had much to do with physics, so it was not a, you know, not in the rejection, but it was a, a second-hand report. <laughs> um, so, uh, I mean, at the time of the rejection, I, I was simply, uh, simply annoyed um, because I thought that I, I, I'd made an important discovery, and um, I, I simply, as I said, I had to to rewrite the paper and make make its uh, consequences more clear. And uh, if the people in, in CERN along the corridor didn't uh, understand what I was doing, it had better go elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> How did you find out about the Nobel Prize Award? Ah, well, uh, the first part of the story is that uh, having experienced a lot of attention from the media uh, previously, uh, like after the uh, discovery announcement at CERN, uh, and uh, other other occasions, I I reckoned that uh, if there were t a noble uh, announcement, uh, life was going to be r r rather rather difficult. There was going to be a mob of of journalists out my front outside my front door wi wi within a, within an hour or so. So I would be somewhere else. <laughs> uh, a car drew up across the street by the by the gardens, and a lady of about seventy-ish got out, came across the road, and was in a very excited way said, "Congratulations, uh, my 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 daughter has just phoned from London to tell me the news." And I said, "What news?" Uh, and so she she told me uh, about the award, and then I went home and read the messages on, on my phone. What did it feel like to know you won the Nobel Prize? And what's changed in your life since then? Well, well the feel, feelings are, are rather mixed. I, I mean, I'd seen it coming for, for quite a time. Um, actually, uh, as long ago as 1980, I heard by a, 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 an old friend who uh, at the time worked in Lund, Whose co one of whose colleagues was on the Nobel Committee that I'd 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 been nominated as long ago as 1980, so so it was it was for a long time a possibility and um, uh, I mean for a long time I I got uh, uh, as as the um, 
uh, as the discovery began to materialize, uh, I got very, very tense each year at the beginning of October. <laughs> uh, so, so the actu actual, uh, actual announcement came in a way as, as, a, as a relief. Now it was all over. <laughs> but of course it's not all over because the, the, the media attention is, is so much more in, intense. And um, I'm, uh, I'm rather determined to, to get some of my normal life back uh, uh, during the coming year. And uh, I've uh, sa said to some of my colleagues, I'm going to retire for the second time at my 85th birthday at the end of May and cut down on the number of things that I get involved in. <laughs> How does it feel to be a well-known scientist like Newton and Einstein? How does it feel to be a well-known scientist like Newton and Einstein? Um, well, I, 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 I wouldn't want to be com com compared too much with Einstein because he did uh, so many uh, other things and uh, I'm known for only this one thing. Um, but I, I can appreciate uh, very much what, what happened to, to him when he became a, a, a celebrity. Um, well, probably, uh, in the, well, certainly in the, in the 20s after he got his Nobel Prize. Uh, I mean, that's a sort of previous case of, of a lot of media attention. Um, it's... Um, well, uh, uh, one, of, one of the things I, I would, would say is, is that when you, when you get this sort of, sort of attention for a particular thing which you've been successful in doing, uh, it's hard, very hard ever to match up to it again. <laughs> Hi. Um, do you think the discovery of the Higgs boson is a good or a bad thing for physics? Is the discovery of the Higgs boson a good or bad thing for physics? <coughs> Uh, <laughs> do you expect me to say it's a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> Popular media has named the Higgs boson the God particle, but do you agree with this name? I'm embarrassed by it. it it's, I mean, you, you, I'm not sure whether you, whether you know how, how, it, how it arose, but the, I mean, it's, it's the title of a, of, a, of a book published some years ago by Leon Lederman with... with uh, uh, the help from a from from a scientific journalist, uh, and it it was about the the search for this particle, which was going to be very difficult, uh, and he he proposed uh, giving the title of the book as that goddamn particle because it was going to be difficult. His edit, editor wouldn't have that, and he said, "All right, let's call it the god particle." Uh, and uh, there was a, I think there was an indignant reaction from a lot of the physics community about that because it, it was really creating confusion <laughs> about what, what this was about. And that confusion has persisted um, so that um, I get stories about, um, you know, missionaries of various sorts doorstepping people to, to tell them that it's been proved that God ex exists because the God particle has been found. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, you know, I don't like this kind of confusion between two entirely different issues. <laughs> uh, are there any last words of advice you have for our budding physicists? Any life lessons or mottos? Any lessons? Yeah. You have to specialise to, to pick a, a topic for a, for a thesis but don't ignore what else is, is, is going on. It, it's, it may be useful. So maybe take a circuitous route like you into physics. Mm. Um, so Professor Higgs, it has been an honour for you to join us today. Thank you on behalf of all of the students and all of us here for answering our questions. Can I have a huge round of applause, please, for Professor Higgs? <laughs>